London, a state dinner has just been tendered representatives of 51 United Nations by King George VI. Delegates to the first General Assembly of the United Nations Organization, here to convene a meeting that may well determine whether peace will prevail on Earth, whether the children of all the nations are to live. 25 years ago, the League of Nations was born, only to die of anemia in Geneva while men bled in Manchuria and Ethiopia. For the second time then in a generation, the wounded nations of a world convalescing from war have met to discover not only the means of their survival, but also their right to survival. Remembering the failure of the League, five years of battle and agony, and the implications of the atomic age, the delegates are realistic. But remembering these, they must also be prepared to surrender, if need be, certain sovereign rights to the common rights of man. Dedicated to humanity and hard common sense, they listen to Britain's Prime Minister, Clement Attlee. We realize, as perhaps never before, a choice is offered to mankind. Twice in my lifetime, a war has brought untold sorrow to mankind. Should there be a third world war, the long upward progress towards civilization may be halted for generations, and the work of myriads of men and women through the centuries be brought to naught. It is for us today, bearing in mind the great sacrifices that have been made, to prove ourselves no less courageous in approaching our great task, no less patient, no less self-sacrifice. We must, we will succeed. Under the global emblem of the United Nations, the General Assembly conducts its first piece of official business. Ballots are distributed for the election of a president. With the United States and Russia favoring the Norwegian delegate, and Great Britain supporting Paul Spock of Belgium, the balloting proceeds. The secret balloting completed, a count of 28 to 23 gives the presidential chair to Paul Spock. 51 United Nations have organized to give the civilized world another chance. 